Okay, so we are going to be doing the CARES today. CARES stands for corneal allogenic intrastromal ring segments. So for those who are not uh, familiar with the term, it's uh, basically uh, a, a segment tissue segment that we create out of any source of allogenic tissue. Here we use uh, conius, uh, donor corneoscleral rim because it's very easily available. And uh, we insert that into an intrastromal channel, uh, which is just like you in insert intacts, except for the fact that this is going to give you much more effect than intacts because uh, the amount of tissue that you can safely insert and also you can uh, insert it in very thin corneas, very advanced corneas because you are not scared that it is going to melt or cause erosion or extrusion or anything like that. Uh, and that fear would always be with you if you were doing the same uh, with intacts uh, in, in these thin corneas. So CAS gives you a wide range of treatment options right from very mild keratoconus to very advanced keratoconus and we have been able to avoid DALCs in many patients by just doing a CARES. So I will just show you today's patient. Uh, this is basically uh, the, the topography uh, of the patient. If you can come a little bit closer, please. He's an 18-year-old patient. Uh, the youngest we've done so far is, I think, 8-year-old. So these, this is uh, uh, basically a very simple procedure to do. Uh, the learning curve is very low. And uh, uh, what I'm going to show you here today is customized care. So I think uh, we've been seeing care for some time now. Uh, and we've also been doing customized care for some time now. But I'm going to show it to you here live today. And you can see that the shape is not uniform. Uh, that's because when you look at a patient with keratoconus, it's not always, uh, you know, uniform amount of steepening everywhere. So you want a flattening of this cone, but you want a differential flattening. You want more flattening where it's steepest and you want slightly, you do want flattening where, let's say for instance, there's 51 diopters, but you don't want it to flatten out uh, as much as uh, you want the 56 to flatten out. So you want a differential flattening within the cone itself and that's what customized cares does. And uh, this is a great advantage over synthetic segments. You do have asymmetric se synthetic segments also. But remember there, there is no, no variability that you can do. You cannot really customize it per patient because they come in standard sizes. You have a standard, uh, you know, length, arc length of the synthetic segment. You have a standard variability. But here you can actually, uh, you know, customize it uh, absolutely independently for each patient. For instance, I can change the zone which is uniform thickness from 645 to 430. And I can have this arc length different. If it was a patient with a larger, a very steep zone, I would have made the uniform part longer and the, uh, the tapered part which you see on top shorter. So the amount of individualized variation you can do is massive. You can do both edge tapers. You can do central taper. You can do, uh, like you see here, a narrow edge taper. You can do a broad edge taper if you want more flattening on top. Here it's all about 48 diopters on top. So I want a little bit of flattening but not too much. So it uh, really gives you huge amount of uh, variability and customization. That's why we call it customized cares. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use an optic zone of 4.6. If you can just come to the uh, the camera, please, the microscope, if you can get it to the uh, uh, the operating microscope. This is basically a cornea that we've uh, loaded onto uh, uh, an artificial anterior chamber. Give me a revexel. So the, actually, we've already removed the epithelium and endothelium. I'm not going to show you that. And you can also see that I've made a small mark right at the center, uh, which is based on the reticule so that we know that's the center of the cornea. So we use the uh, operating microscope reticule for that. We are not bothered about the endothelium here in this procedure. You just want a non-edematous cornea, remember that. You don't want an edematous cornea because if you cut an edematous cornea, it will de-swell out in the patient's eye and you won't have the thickness of uh, tissue that you thought you would be putting. So we are going to uh, already, uh, actually in this cornea, we also already removed the endothelium. But just for uh, demonstration purpose, this is how we remove the endothelium. We place it, uh, uh, you know, upside down in a, in a uh, Teflon block and we just scrape the endothelium off. So as I said here, we had already done it uh, for uh, just saving some time uh, during the live surgery. Now you can see that I am uh, just, you know, uh, getting this to be aligned well, the hole, uh, with the hole in the Teflon block. So now we know the centration is good. And we are going to take this uh, trifine, which is basically a double bladed trifine. And you can see that we have it in uh, different sizes. This is, uh, this trifine, uh, the patent has been granted actually in... Uh, uh, to me in uh, for this double bladed trifine and you can see that this is this particular one is available as uh, I don't think it's coming in focus but this is uh, available as 6.5 and 8 uh, as you can see here but we also have different uh, sizes so that way you can vary the volume of uh, thickness that's implanted also based on the uh, severity of keratoconus so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this trifine and again use the reticule to center it and make sure that it's uh, well centered and then I'm going to just cut down. So I cannot show the reticule to you but I can see it in one of the eyepieces. So we just press straight down one two forceps and we just uh, just make rotate that to make sure it's cut fully and here also you can see the central part has come out 
and uh, you know if you are a person who wanted to use this cornea for something else you could have retained the endothelium you can uh, use a larger refined size or whatever if you want to do a PK with that but here uh, what I want to show you now is this tissue that is uh, basically in between the two blades of the trephine and we, you know that we cut it down with the uh, endothelium side up and the Bowman's membrane side down so we know that this now is the Bowman's membrane side and I am going to just mark it with a marker pen so this is for later reference so that we know which is the Bowman's membrane side when we take it out of the trephine so now I have taken this out of the trephine and I have laid it here just get it into focus one second Dr. can you come and sit in the front? So here I have got it into focus here. I am just going to cut it. Okay. And here also we will cut it. We do not want this length. So you just need a little bit of it. And you can see here that is the Bowman's side and that is the posterior stroma. So that is why I said that it is nice to mark it so that you have and orientation of which is uh, the Bowman's and the anterior stroma and which is the posterior stroma. Now once that is done, these are also instruments which we uh, ourselves have designed. Uh, so here you can see what I am going to do is now this is a CAS customizer and if you look at it carefully uh, just to show it, I will show you tilt it because otherwise it is difficult to see. It has all the optic zones marked uh, and that is to size. It also has radial marks uh, which is basically for uh, for uh, putting the uh, clock hours and customizing according to topography. So here we have our plan is from 2 to 6.45 and we have a taper somewhere in the middle. So I will place this starting from 2 o'clock and our optic zone is 4.6. So I will place it on the corresponding optic zone 4.6 and just drape it along the optic zone and we come up to 6.45. So I, currently I am on the 4.6 optic zone. Okay. So I have draped it there and you actually have to employ a draping maneuver which makes this step very simple so I have got now uh, the required length against the optic zone that we are planning it is not in focus uh, there is a little bit of reflections that is coming off the um, of the instrument the CAS custom I am sorry about that but basically this is the 2 o'clock mark so I am going to mark this as 2 o'clock and then there is 4.30 which we had planned that is here. So, I am also going to mark that and then we have 645 which is basically here. So, you can see each of these the ink has not come sorry. 645 and this to this is the non tapered part and from here to here we are going to taper it. So, just so that I know which is the tapered segment I just put a few marks over there. So, now if I take it off this and place it back on the white teflon block it will be seen better hold this focus it yeah thanks for okay okay so now I'll cut it along this which was at 645 we don't want that segment and we'll also cut the one that was at two o'clock because we don't want that segment either and now we customize it and what we plan for here is a narrow edge taper so I am going to cut it from here to here which is basically narrow edge and so now we have this non tooth so this is the segment that we are going to be putting in now into this patient's eye ok now we will go to the patient So we have our settings already here we are using an inner diameter of 4.6 mm and we are aiming for a tunnel uh, width of about 1.5 I think 1.5 or 1.52 no that is ok. Uh, the outer diameter here is 7.3 this will uh, vary a little bit uh, the outer diameter based on the patient's curvature also uh, and uh, the depth that we put is at about 50 make the patient lie down sister patient pad the depth that we uh, use is uh, at about 50 percent of the minimum stromal thickness yeah next one uh, yeah ma'am we are just getting the patient to lie down now yeah. for the femtosecond channel so Sudhan, uh, tell you are preparing I had just one question does it help to do a cross linking of this particular 
Uh, you can, ma'am, uh, uh, but I feel that there's no real extra advantage offered because while I'm cross-linking the patient, that will also get cross-linked. And not only that, uh, it's really not based on the stiffness of the tissue, it's based, the effect comes more based on the volume of tissue that's being transplanted. So the stiffness per se... No, ma'am, uh, putting it really doesn't. No, even if you cross-link it, it's not going to become uh, this. But I'd like to tell you that, uh, you know, even uh, the putting as such, even when it's not uh, stiff, is pretty easy. But also Jack Parker and Shady Award both have actually published uh, uh, a technique of dehydration uh, of the care segment which makes it more stiffer. It actually becomes uh, very similar to plastic and you can just, uh, you can just uh, insert it. Parakin? Why have you preferred it off with the end? Because if it's an intact segment, it's uniform uh, thickness, you know? Yeah, that's, 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 uh, that's, uh, that's because ma'am, I want uh, differential flattening. I don't want a uniform flattening all around. So I want the amount of flattening that comes also to change uh, as per the steepness of the patient's cornea or the steepness of the cone. Can Nala Tarango? Wait a minute. So normally implant ICRS is 70 to 80 percent depth. Here you're working with 50 percent depth. Correct. Uh, have you optimized Parakin. the depth facing your experience or what is the reaction? Yeah, we thing? place it at around 50 percent. We place it at around 50 percent thickness, 50 uh, percent depth. Because we are not worried about uh, erosions or extrusions, right? In uh, ICRS, you basically place it at a deep uh, uh, depth just because you don't want the overlying cornea to erode out. You don't want the overlying cornea to finally get eroded. So here we are not worried. In fact, we have actually used uh, CARES to treat post-ICRS melts. And it uh, works beautifully. So since we are not bothered about the melting that can happen just because uh, it's superficially placed, uh, we can actually do it in uh, uh, at any depth, but I found that 50% depth gives you a pretty, pretty good effect. I, I Light don't paringa. see uh, intact belts at all. Light paringa. Now that we have stopped putting the sutures also, I don't see it at all. So uh, Ma'am, actually we do, we do see a lot of melts actually coming to us referred from uh, all over. Uh, and uh, I don't think we are completely away from it because... Uh, 645 because ba mainly because of a few reasons uh, one is uh, because you know you might think that you have enough tissue over the uh, ICRS when you start off even if it's an ideal case with time the patient might progress and what you thought was adequate initially might turn out to be not in, uh, not adequate then you have the category of patients who are constant eye rubbers so there uh, that's again another category where it can uh, erode and then per se intact can erode sometimes two o'clock right so these are the marks again I'm placing which are the marks which we also used uh, used for uh, for customizing the cares. So that helps us translate it uh, well onto the patient's eye. So now this is a pretty young boy and I hope he's going to cooperate. Parakin? Nere Park no, okay? Vishnu? Green light park no, huh? Pudunga? Kira Parango? Kira Parango? Kira Parango? So just like smile, Kira Pathakonga, Kal Parango, Kal Parango. Just like smile, you want to ensure that you don't have too much of a uh, uh, conjunctival, uh, you know, fluid there in the Kaldi sac. So you drain off the excess fluid. Chin down, please. Kunjib di Vichkonga. And then just like Dr. Maipal so beautifully showed, we are going to dock using the smile machine. And we ask the patient to look at the green light. Green light parango. Green light parango. Very good. Ada dingu padambi, ada dingu. Green light parango. Very good. So this is a large cone we are using, so you also see a bit of conjunctiva there. Hmm. Now we are going to apply the femto laser treatment. That's the ring treatment. It takes about uh, 15 seconds to finish. Those are the two incisions that we make for entry. And once that is done, now we go on to insertion of the cares. Ma'am, it's about 1.5, uh, but we vary it also a little bit depending on the uh, trephine size that we've used. So we have a trephine size that gives you thicker tissue also. That's for the really advanced keratoconuses. If that it's more than 
It's about one point. No, this is more than one, ma'am. It's about one point five to one point five two. How much was it, Sampat? One point five three. One point five three. It is. Normally, we we use about one point five, one point five two. That's how much we use for this refine. For the larger refine size, we use about one point five five. The optic zone is four point six. So now we're just going and opening the tunnel. You can just do that. And this is the left eye, so we'll insert from this side. Light path konga. I don't know how much clarity you're getting. Uh, hopefully, it's clear enough. So this is the segment. You can you can see here. You want to place it on top of the patient's eye. Straight parangu thambi. and uh, the trick is to just get the leading edge in and once the leading edge is in uh, it's a pretty easy to implant it pick a focus please down kunj uh, up fine that's fine that's fine update update got update it's okay okay so we've got that leading edge in and you also need to get the other side of the leading edge in just hold it with down with the forceps because it will tend to slip out once that's done just ask your assistant to put a little bit of saline put saline please Don't put saline and hydrate the segment up unnecessarily too much earlier, because you don't want to do that. But once it's in, you just uh, push it in, and then you can actually go from below the segment and just use it to move the segment forwards. Then uh, give me two forceps. Okay, so you can see that's that's basically it, and uh, here we have it reaching up to here. You can also use a reverse Sinsky from the other side. I I am not seeing a very clear image on the uh, camera uh, TV screen here. I don't know how clear it is for you. It's quite clear. Okay, that's good. So here's a curved reverse Sinsky which we put from the other side. So we can take it up till there, and uh, you can see now the leading edge is right where we marked. The taper starts right from where we uh, again gave the, gave the second incision. and the tail is exactly where we wanted it to so this is uh, how uh, we can just get it customized exactly put saline please and you can just kind of make sure that the uh, side which was marked with ink which is the bowman side is on the inside because that's where you want more bulk of tissue and also that uh, helps you to ascertain that there are no twists in the segment i think that's all uh, there was there's in this case this patient was already cross linked earlier so we are not going to be cross linking him and that basically brings us to the end of this surgery so sir very elegant very wonderful Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Everyone knows that this you have again put uh, India on the world map. So congratulations. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks for that uh, very kind comment. Yeah, it's actually one circular tunnel. Uh, but I use one half in this case because this was a decentered cone. But there are other cases where I would put two, uh, two, two segments on either side. Here, that's not applied. And perhaps in the long term, would you anticipate problems related to the retention of the uh actually uh, that's a wonderful question sir thanks for asking that uh basically in uh, there are two uh, parts to this to my answer i would say one is that in many cases we also cross link at the same time so all the keratocytes go at that point of time now even in the cases where we are not cross linking for example this child who was already cross linked earlier the keratocytes will get replaced by host keratocytes very soon now the question of rejection this is where it differs from other lenticular implantation techniques because you do not have anything over the pupil the pupil is actually completely spared whereas in other lenticular implantation techniques you are having uh, at least a thin uh, layer of tissue over the pupil and that's where your concern of rejection becomes much more stronger because any rejection or anything can cause uh, a drop in vision because you, and even if you don't have a rejection you might have an interface haze because you have two interfaces on either side one on the with the anterior stroma and one with the posterior stroma even if you have minimal interface haze you could get a uh, possibly a loss of contrast sensitivity in this case we are leaving the visual axis completely untouched even if a rejection happens it does not bother me at all because it's well outside the visual axis all we are bothered here is about the volume of tissue that's been added and uh, the rate of rejection is really low because the volume is per se very small sir so we have really never faced any situation where the patient comes back with intense pain watering redness or anything like that the steroids that we give is only for about uh, uh, one maybe 5 weeks or something that's all and that's at a very low dose only the first one week we give it at a higher dose so it becomes and becomes thinner but whether it will 
still have that effect long term or not, which is so, not uh, the case with actually. We've, we've got, uh, uh, actually we started doing this many years back sir, so I've got about 8 years of data now and our data shows that it does not really thin out like people would expect it to be uh, thinning out and that is possibly maybe because it's a mid stromal location and it's not just me but also Mario Nubail who does uh, uh, the lenticule implantation who's also found the same results that it is not really thinning out. So maybe it's different from a tissue that's either placed on the surface or on the inner side of the cornea like a d lenticule and when you have a mid stromal location maybe it, it uh, you know works in a different way. And also I think also that cross linking that we do kind of also freezes it in place because maximum of my cases are cross linked, very rarely do we do the non cross link cases. But our data from uh, 2015 onwards to now shows that you don't really e get the kind of thinning that you would be worried about. It's, it's it really, uh, in fact we will be publishing our ASOST findings soon and that uh, would show that. Uh, about the uh, host keratocytes and the nuclear chromatin, I completely agree with you and that's why I uh, personally prefer this to anything that would cover the visual axis, for example, lenticule implantation. And obviously, as compared to plastic, it has great advantages uh, uh, since it's allogenic tissue. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot.